back and bigger than ever. It's the unofficial 40 from Soonerscoop.com. Now, here's the entire Soonerscoop crew, Carrie, Josh, Eddie, and Bob. All right, welcome back. It is another edition of the Unofficial 40 Podcast brought to you by MidFirst Bank. Go to uh, midfirst.com slash U40. That's midfirst.com slash U40. Sign up for that OU Rewards credit card today. We welcome in the entire crew, Eduardo Naharadasevich. Although I'm sure uh, basketball doesn't really apply after the shit show that we saw last night. Uh, Bob Prisbillo was there to watch it all go down, to watch uh, people. Was there actual screaming? Could you hear it? Because sometimes when they're so bad like that, you hear the screams from the crowd. Yeah, you could. For sure. I thought it was pretty fun. I had a good time. The complete, Watching the meltdown? The complete silence after the Coleman three. I've never heard it like, like that before. Yeah, it sounded like a non-conference game. Well, thanks to Brady Manick and Christian Doolittle, they had the opportunity to hit that miracle shot. How hot of a take is it to say that is, I want to say that's a top 20 all-time loss Bad in beat. OU basketball history. Yeah. I think it is. To, and, because it's Texas, because you're playing for third place in the conference. Yeah. And I you're mean, playing to seal, basically, your NCAA tournament. Absolutely. Head. And there's things on, you know, I, I, I guess other factors out there that, could now go into you finishing in seventh place seventh in, the, in the conference. Playing on the first day now. You finish in seventh place in the conference, you're not making the NCAA tournament. I don't care what they say. I think it'll, it, you know, it, it, I mean, beating TCU is not easy either. They've, no, they, they, they've beaten Baylor, Baylor, Tech, to the oh, I, West, West Virginia. I said it this morning. I, I don't, I don't think OU will win on Saturday. It's oh. just, I mean, you're asking a lot now to turn now around you gotta play, and you gotta the way that they lost. The tournament. I mean, that was. It was it was rough. That was a it was a rough look. Their only saving grace should be Baylor beating West Virginia. So then they end up the six seed, and then they might end up playing Texas in the three three six matchup. That'd be even more gross. West Virginia has not has not helped them. So basically, they won on the road. Yeah. They did what OU couldn't do. They won in Ames. West Virginia is an abomination <laughs> of a basketball program. You just threw out program. Iowa State as a quality win. Well, you've lost six to seven. Yes, that is a quality win. It's an, that's an abomination of a program, and uh, not program, but team. That it, it's an indictment on college basketball that that team is still a seven seed yeah. in the in Lenardi's project. They're awful in the bracketology. Like that is insane. It to might me. be the worst. How are they still in the tournament? Ever seen in the Big Twelve Conference? <laughs> it's just bad. Well, there's a lot know. of bad teams in college basketball. Someone's got to get in. Yeah, there's a reason Dayton and San Diego State are. I think you know, Dayton's really. Teams. I think both those teams are really good. It kind of shows you that you don't need to have a bunch of bag men in college basketball. Well, I mean, you do if you're going to compete. And to say that you think Dayton would be running through the Big Twelve right now, like I mean, and I guess that's a bad example because Kansas and Baylor are so much better than everybody else. Dayton took Kansas to what the. Uh, Oh, it was the championship game of the yep. Hawaii, Maui. On, the Maui. Mm-hmm. They got they beat him in overtime, didn't they? I think I Dodson right. went off in the second half. But I don't no, know. No, but you always want you're always gonna when there's a Zion out there, that's always gonna make you better. Even though, sure. God, what when did they get knocked out? When did Duke get knocked out last year? Elite Eight, okay. Mich- Michigan State. But they had those near falls against Central Florida. Yeah, they should have yeah. got beat in the second round, yeah. right? Central yep. Florida. Oh yeah, with the uh, Taco Taco, Taco, Taco Fall. Fall. Yeah. Oh All well, right. it was that. That was a rough loss. Though. Should and I, should we bring Josh in, or should we just keep him? Up? Well, I wanted to say first and foremost, uh, if there is anyone in danger of contracting the coronavirus, it is definitely Josh. Because oh, yeah. you have s- small children, for one. I thought you meant because of his proximity to Mexico. That's what I thought. Uh, well, <laughs> Linda, who knows what kind of squalor she lives in? Uh, what kind of? camp she has you know with the others that have been on cruise ships and things that have been now let out of quarantine i think she lives in the heights i think she's one of those uh housekeepers that just is banking the entire time josh is like massively people like, overpaying she's got there's, so many houses yeah there, there's people like that in oklahoma city there's people that cleaned houses that i knew that or their parents cleaned houses they went to heritage hall plus your wife works in a hospital yeah Oh yeah, no. The, uh, Hello, Josh. Hi, yeah, uh, and I'd like to 
also welcome Jason Kersey back to the show. Um, <laughs> so no, uh, yeah, Jason there's is, no question. Just fast forwarded to this point, like because Tiffany, you know, with what she does, she works at multiple hospitals. So each hospital has been sending her like, you know, information on this is how we want to handle this, you know, the coronavirus situation, and I. I'm going to take my moment for my platform. People, it's the f***ing flu. Calm down. Like, <laughs> Holy cow. All right, <laughs> President Trump. Them. Well, no. Yeah. People are losing their mind. We know mind who's been living it. in Texas for a couple years, don't we? <laughs> oh, it's insane. Ooh. Like, I, 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 I mean, I will say that canceling, game, like Chicago State canceling a trip to the West Coast right now. That's a little much. Chicago me. State That's just insane. needs to cancel its program. So this is <laughs> That's so, a little okay, much for me. You you have all the information. Boy, this is a weird segment. I didn't expect this. So it, I mean, like this isn't even as bad as like the bird flu when it was going around. I'm not saying that it's not dangerous, but if you're not 80, the likelihood of you getting anything worse than a bad cough and feeling like crap for a couple of days is pretty small. Like I mean. The, the four of us, I mean, not exactly beacons of health and, you know, nah, I, don't I mean, know about that. with the exception of Bob, we all eat garbage. Eddie, you just had to fill out a form. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst thing I've seen in a long time. Multiple. How many times have you had five or more drinks in the last year? No, that was the, that was the follow-up <laughs> yeah. to the, do you drink alcohol? And the answer was yes. Yes. If yes, how many times in the past year have you had five or more drinks in a day? Multiple. And I just put multiple. <laughs> I think say, multiple seems very lenient towards you, Eddie. Like that I, feels very. I literally sat there for a second. I was like, I don't know what to put here. <laughs> Some of those questions that they ask plus. are, and I it was just the dermatologist. I had a wart frozen off, which is just a fascinating process. I've never had to have that done. It doesn't feel good. I, I had it done when really? I was a kid. I was. Pretty I mean, young. it feels fine now. I had but... a wart on my hand when I was a kid. Probably from playing with toads or something, uh, and uh, it just fell off. One day, I picked at it a lot. That's kind of what I did with mine, and then it finally was just like I got to go get this thing professionally done. But so, I'll tell yeah. you what, right now, I walked into the dermatologist's office, the lo- the uh, waiting area. Everybody had oh, masks. No, that was like I brought the age demographic down by <laughs> fifty five years in there. I thought I was going to be murdered. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those guys that's like, oh, I got this. Maybe I should go. To the, I should go to the dermatologist and have them check this or that. Or you know, I've always had a mole on my neck. Honestly, you know, the only reason why I I got it done is because when I'm holding the camera, uh-huh. I feel like that's all people look at on my hand is is the wart. Is the wart? I didn't even know because like one. with the didn't right with know. the right hand. Well, then I just wasted all that thirty five dollars or whatever it was. Worried about guitar, yeah. So. um... Anyway, uh, Josh, at least you have a, an excuse not to have to fly out to like the West Coast for a while for any recruiting related stuff. Uh, I mean, LA camp was last weekend, and you know if if I would have Josh, seen we need the, you. To, we need you to go to Seattle tomorrow. I'd go. I'd go. I I couldn't be less he, concerned about. He this. is not scared. No, this is this is. I mean, that, I, I told actually, Tim the other day. You're making me feel better. With the exception of, like, me getting it and handing it off to my children. But, like, there's been no fatalities for children. Like, they are completely unfazed to any serious degree by this. Other than that, like, it's a flu. Like, I mean, it's a kind of strong strain of it. But, like, it's not... If if people just called it what it is, it's basically a different strain of the flu, everybody would calm down. But because it's got a name and because we're tracking every time there's a new case... Everybody has, has just been trained to lose their mind on it. Hmm. All right. Sounds like something. I feel better sound, about my day now. I mean, I do a little bit, but I also wonder if Josh has been paid off by the Chinese <laughs> for covering <laughs> for them trying to spread this terrible plague disease. Oh, I, I would bet you money it's a lot worse as far as who has it than the numbers that are out there. Like I'd be, I mean, and that's not in the inside information. Don't like Tiff, Tiffany is a mid-level administrator in her company. Like we don't have a bunch of insight into this or anything, but just based on what I do know, I just, I, I don't, I don't believe that we're getting all the numbers 
Correct. But again, the bottom line is, it's it's a flu. Like it's just a it's a it's a specialized strand. Eddie, it's not will a you big deal. will you title this? Oh, Eddie! Oh, he's got it. Eddie's <laughs> coughing. He picked it up. He just sneezed. Oh, <laughs> that's not <Got> good. <laughs> that was unplanned too. <laughs> I think just by talking to you, I've contracted something. Can you title this segment "Coronavirus Ain't Shit"? Just let's just call it that. Boom. Yeah, I can. Uh, okay, so enough with the off topic. Let's get to the recruiting, so Jason Kersey can be happy. Uh, actually, he probably likes coronavirus talk. We're not doing po- politics though, Kersey. So sorry. Uh, it was a big weekend for the Our Sooners. Best don't count in Oklahoma, anyways. Yeah. What do you mean, R? Are you giving Mine. away your Uh-oh. affiliation? Uh oh. No, I've, I did. It was I tough did. to read where Eddie came out on it, but now we all know for real. I'm a registered Republican. I just don't vote that way sometimes. <laughs> the only reason I went to the polls yesterday was to make sure the liquor. If I want to go get a bottle of wine yep. on a Sunday, I can go get you a can bottle. Get of a wine. bottle yep. of wine. You can't from get the Seven Eleven. You can't get the good stuff if you're buying. If you're buying your wines from a gas station, you need to look yourself in the mirror. Okay. Been strange if one county said yes and the other would have said no. That 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 was it a full that would have been weird. Was it a full throttle passing? I, I didn't even look. I just know it passed Cleveland, Oklahoma. That's, right, that's the only two. The, counties the only, that really only two that matters. I think it was like sixty nine percent. It was pretty overwhelming. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, well, go ahead, Josh. Why uh, why wouldn't the rest of the state just be like okay? Our two most populated counties are now. On, so we might as well just run with this. Well, you know those people out in Caddo and Apache and the Seminole. They they got they they go to their own. They get they just thing. drink beer. They don't care about liquor. And that's probably true too. Actually, I can't say that. I mean, what what tastes good with meth? You know, does Jack taste good with meth? I don't know. Well, I mean, uh, you're a wine connoisseur. I've never, I've never really I figured I, you're a meth connoisseur. As well. ne- I don't know. I've never really tasted whiskey that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, certainly not as much as me or Josh, for sure. Um, so, uh, big recruiting weekend. We had some. We had an eyeball emoji go out. Uh, we had a decommitment from Alabama that I think everybody is excited about. Is uh, Bob was spot on Friday night tykes with uh, Latrell McCutcheon. McCutcheon. Uh, he's he was openly talking about it this week on Twitter. Uh, but Josh, if I'm coming to this as the village idiot. Uh, what what do I need to know about what went right for Oklahoma this weekend in recruiting? Well, you know, we talked about this last week, and I said I don't expect this to be a huge fireworks weekend. Like, if something happened, maybe that wouldn't be crazy, and obviously something did. Um, but I really like that it just seems like there's a big trend that's going right for Oklahoma right now. Like, they're starting to really build some momentum after a January that was just awful. I mean, whether it was 2020, 2021, it just didn't seem like Oklahoma was doing anything other than treading water. And now, I, you know, it, I, I, I put a forecast in for Latrell McCutcheon to Oklahoma after he announced his decommitment from Alabama. Uh, their new offer to his teammate, Andrew McCuba, the kind of safety nickel player, uh, one of the two guys that did pick up an offer this weekend, uh, I think... I think there's a very good chance those guys end up in Oklahoma's class. Now, in both cases, and obviously particularly McCutcheon, Oklahoma's going to have a lot of fighting left to do. That's a top five, top six corner in the whole country. And if he comes back healthy, puts up good senior tape, Alabama and everybody else is going to give it their all to reel him back in. So, I mean, it's it's going to be a deal where, yeah, they you've got a commitment, you clearly lead, but they're going to have to stay on him just the same way. Um Am I wrong in kind of getting oh, the feeling ahead. like he kind of put it out there on Twitter, like, hey, calm down. I, th- I, this process is really, you know, I'm really going to enjoy this process. Kind of like he was announcing, like, don't, you know, kind of get it turned around. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going I to think get it's a recruited. smoke screen. Is it a smoke I screen? still think it's a smoke screen. What about. So, so if you had to guess, you say the eyeballs are for McCutcheon. <clears throat> I would, and I would say it'd be done by a spring game at the latest. It almost seemed I, I, like I it, would agree. It almost seemed like uh, McCutcheon. They said, "All right, you need to you need to flip and decommit, or decommit and flip and commit to Oklahoma before you leave." He's like, "I'll meet you halfway. I'll call him right now and I'll decommit, but I'm not going to commit 
You know, you they were a minute apart, the Riley eyes and McCutcheon D commitments. See, we, one minute. Like, I just, I but don't believe don't that that was that, that coincidence. <laughs> don't we know? I mean, and I don't with, think anybody does think it was a coincidence. With pretty much certainty, even because of when the eyeballs have, you know, not worked out, like, Lincoln really only sends those out. And he'll never admit to this, but I don't we kind of have an idea that he only sends those out if a kid really does commit to him? Yes. So yeah, this isn't like a gut feeling type thing. This yeah. is he. This is what we've been told. So he face to face probably something would happened. have had to tell yes. Lincoln if the eyeballs are for him. Right, he would have had to face to face tell Riley, "I'm committed to Oklahoma." Yeah, just saying. I you know I feel good. I intend to do this at a later date. That right. doesn't count. That and is, when and when I hear something like that, I automatically think, "Well, he wants to go home and do some type of commitment video." Or sure. prepare an announcement of some sort. Didn't we have another well, commitment video? Is, is that, that not the like the most logical thing that could happen, Josh? Yeah, and even before his trip, uh, when he was still committed to Alabama, you know, for people to be like, "Oh, Oklahoma just holding you know a place again." Well, he was committed to Alabama and took a trip to Oklahoma, and even at that time was telling me, "I'm going to take trips to Georgia, Oklahoma. I'll probably go back to Alabama." Like, I mean, he he always had it in his plans to take more trips. So whether he does or doesn't commit, trips are coming. So, you know, right. like I said, it's – it for in a recruitment like his, a commitment basically means you're the leader, you are you have a big enough lead <laughs> that I'll say something. But other than that, don't go crazy. I mean, there's still a long way to go, but it's a sign of what Roy Manning, Alex Grinch, and that defense are doing, that they're reeling in a corner that – I mean, Oklahoma hasn't come anywhere close to a guy like that in quite some time. And then, you know, Josh, we, we asked last week, coming off the Houston Rivals camp, who did you feel better with? Well, now, coming off the big visit weekend, is there anyone that stands out besides McCutcheon that you now feel a lot more confident about? You know, it would kind of be easy to go with um, with Terrence Cooks because I think that visit did go very well. I'm kind of hoping to hook up with him maybe tomorrow and kind of do an interview and really – really kind of get down to the heart of it he's he's a little hit and miss sometimes um but the guy that i really thought came away really with some positive things to say was the tibetchi okoli kid from uh, kansas city uh lincoln college prep there in kansas city actually um a guy that i didn't know was coming in until like the day of and then it was just kind of uh, i stumbled onto it in a conversation i was having with um with actually another player that just mentioned he was there so we were talking, and um, he just – he really likes Thibodeau. And the thing that I noticed in talking to a few sources was I think he was both more physically impressive and more – because, I mean, not everybody had seen him in person yet. I think he impressed some people with his size and the way he's kind of put together. And I also just think he is a guy that, that seems like the staff liked that they kind of responded well to him, thought he was a good guy to have as part of the class. So, like I said, I, I think the chances went up for him. Um, I think Connor Tolleson loved his visit. Um, we'll, we'll kind of have to see because, to my knowledge, he doesn't have anything else set up until April 18th when he's supposed to go to Texas A&M. So he's got a long time to sit there and kind of marinate on Oklahoma, which I know is a school that as soon as they offered, he was very, very serious about. So I, I think Oklahoma, you know, like I said, you didn't get a lot of fireworks this weekend, but if you told me, and this is, you know, 2021, 22, 23 classes were all represented there. If you told me three years from now, there were five or six commitments out of this weekend, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Was there anything that came out of uh, this, this kind of this first weekend, I guess, if you will, on, on campus uh, from DeMarco uh, or Jamar Kane as far as their interaction with players or maybe getting a feel for those guys for the first time for some guys? Well, I didn't talk to a lot of – I mean, obviously there weren't any of the big-time running backs on campus. Sure. So there wasn't going to be a lot of DeMarco Murray talk. But even with Jamar Kane, I did come across something, and I actually put it up in, uh, in Oklahoma this morning. But what is interesting is not from a guy that was there, but from a player that has – set up an official visit to the spring game. Uh, Nathan Rollins Kabonge, the, the kid from uh, Portland, uh, Portland, Oregon, you know, I guess to be clear, because oh, OU so rarely recruits there. Um, Portland, Maine. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
wow. Bob, you know, I was like, there's another Portland. But, Bob, of course, Bob knew where it was. Like, if he's from another one. Portland, Oregon, make sure he brings down some uh, <laughs> coronavirus. Some, well, maybe some needles from Colt Lyarela's house. <laughs> oh. <laughs> another Colt Lyarela. I wanted to go segment. two for two in back-to-back weeks that Colt Lyarela was mentioned on this podcast. We end. We start one month right where we ended the last Did one. Did you Absolutely. do any research on him after the show to... Try and no, I was too busy changing my last name so L.J. Moore can't find me in Oklahoma City. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still running. But uh, with, with the, the kid from Portland, um, he is a defensive end offer. And I, I want to say, I, I need to go back and look at the exact timeline, but he had to be among Jamar Cain's like first or second offers. He was... Almost, I would say within 48 hours of that hire being announced, he had an offer from Oklahoma and had been a longtime Arizona State recruit. So, you know, there's no de- there's no doubting the correlation there. But talking to him, he has just talked about really liking how down-to-earth Jamar Kane was. Just felt like he was a really smart guy, really had a clear plan for him. Um, you could tell the kid was just really impressed. And you look at his offer list, I mean – there are some good programs on there, Miami, uh, Nebraska, uh, Colorado. I mean, there, there's some teams on there that play some winning football, but should Oklahoma really push for him? That that guy could absolutely end up a part of this class. Well, and I isn't it really kind of you feel like OU is setting the table? They put out the, the video with Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray. They know – I mean, we've talked about it a lot, what Spencer Rattler did for the class two years ago. Like – that is kind of the jumping off point. If they can make the Caleb Williams thing happy happen, then that sets a lot of things in motion for this program, right? Oh, I don't think there's any question. I mean, and there there has already been a rumor out that he was going to be joined by Jalil Farouk, uh, the wide receiver from the area. Uh, he is going to have a basketball game, so Farouk won't make it in. But this is this is huge for Oklahoma because it's not even that Oklahoma has to get a commitment from Caleb Williams, which I don't expect to happen this weekend. I, I don't think that's his plan. That's not. It's not one of those things where, like we were just talking about, where okay, publicly it's this, but privately maybe it's a little different. I think you need that. At least, you need that to be as public as possible. If it's going to happen, yeah, you want to yep. be able to shout it from the rooftops. Well, and my expectation is that he'll return for his official for the spring game. And that's when you want that to go down anyway. That's more impactful because mm-hmm. you're going to have a whole flock of guys there, Trevion Henderson being one of them that is from the same, you know, I guess geographic area. You know, I know people from Oklahoma, and certainly I'm, I'll include myself in that, don't exactly know the difference from Hopewell, Virginia, to Washington, D.C., but it's, it's close enough for us being this far away that it's kind of the same deal. They're familiar with each other. That's a big deal. And then you throw in, you know, all the other guys, like I just mentioned, Rollins, Kabonga. I mean, there's Caleb Williams is a guy that carries national prestige. And if you get that going, then maybe you have something that happens like a couple years ago with Theo Weiss and Trajan Bridges, not Trajan Bridges, uh, Theo Weiss and R.J. Henderson. Obviously, that worked out really well. But, I mean, just building that Continues uh, kind to work of enthusiasm. Out. Make sure you beat that name. <laughs> And I, maybe I get in my head too much. I think it's a smoke screen with Caleb, too. Just because of the fact, what has he done? He's made sure that you knew he had an LSU avatar on Twitter. He made sure you knew he had a Clemson mm-hmm. one. He made sure you knew he's not on commitment watch. There's part of me that thinks if that he happens. comes out, If he comes out and doesn't have an OU avatar, then, then you know it's OU. There you go. If he doesn't pull one up all week? Yeah. <clears throat> oh wow. yep. Like after the trip is over? Because he's done that everywhere else he's taking trips. This is kind of like hat science, isn't it? Maybe I'm yeah, like overthinking it. Worn. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> the one that's all crumpled and won't hold its shape. <laughs> that's where the kid's going. Do you know what I'm hearing? Bob's not here for any of these recruits bullshit. He's yeah. not here for yeah. any of it. I don't want to I think that's it. fair. I'm old, mm-hmm. old, old man Bob now. <laughs> I don't care anymore. Hey, you got the kid. You just got to call the cops on some neighbors to make sure that they're not f***ing around in the neighborhood and you'll be right, right in line. And All set up a dermatology is... appointment as well. You got to do that. <laughs> now, is, Absolutely. Is Caleb the only kid coming in? It's, could it seem a little odd he picked this weekend just because spring practice starts next next week? But if that's the only time you can make it, that's how you got to go. Is he the only one that we know for sure? That's the only one I'm certain of. I've heard some talk of some visits next weekend. Which but makes sense. I, I have checked with some people, and I haven't heard back definitively. But I, I, talking to a lot of players, and obviously this time of year, I'm 
kind of constantly hitting guys up like, hey, what's going on? You know, just kind of checking in. And so far, I've heard nothing along those lines. So it sounds like, I mean, it makes sense because, if, like I just said, if they can get Caleb Williams, whether he's publicly in the boat or privately, kind of like, you know, we all knew <clears throat> back when Brock Vandegrift took his visit at, right, before he left, he told Lincoln he was coming way back in the summer. And then he waited about, I think it was like two weeks, and then actually made his announcement. So if you can have something like that, and Oklahoma can kind of start to build on that and let that be kind of a, you know, like a groundswell, and then, oh, we're, you know, we're at the spring game, and now Caleb Williams is coming in to visit, and things start to happen. I think that's the way you can really use that for momentum. This weekend, I, I you know, guys, I, I would be interested to hear your point of view. I'm I think of it from such a recruiting perspective all the time. I, I don't know that that's the best way for Oklahoma to have this go. Like, it's great to have him on board. Like, you wouldn't say no. But from a momentum standpoint, I'd much rather have him wait and kind of have everybody thinking it's going to happen and then have it pop off at the spring game. If you're guaranteed that he's coming back, and I, which, I mean, he's obviously sure. already set it up, uh, it, it does lead you to believe that, this is like a because and what did he tell Adam Friedman or what did Friedman report as far as his inside circles coming on this trip to Norman with him? Uh, Business it, partners. Yeah, it would make you think maybe Bagman possibly. <laughs> um, it, it would Hi. make you think uh, that there's some type of this is where here. I want to go, but I want everybody to come and sign off on it before I go back and do it during spring. That that completely makes sense to me. Uh, Lincoln, will you show my business partners around, please? What is that? I w- yes, the Rhett Bomar plan, please. <laughs> without the without the violations. And no, with the violations, but without J D Quinn. Yeah. Do we know if Williams has any sort of relationship with Joseph Wate or any of the other guys who are in that area from the the last couple classes? I don't get that impression. Like I now, I take that back. I know he knows Aaron Parks. I I don't know the depth of the relationship, but I know they know each other. Like you know, they've camped together. They've done stuff like that. And obviously, he's connected to Monkel Goodwine, who is also you know Aaron Parks' former teammate. So that's the. I mean, like as well as OU's done in DC, this could open up a whole different level of. You know, Oklahoma really being able to go in and recruit with anybody in the D.C. area. And it's been good to them. So. It's kind of shocking, considering it, that that just seems so foreign 10 years ago, even. Five years no ago, doubt. even. That's all that Shane OU going Beamer. into the D.C. area to get guys. And I guess in a well, way... I think, you know, Charles Tapper kind of opened that up sure. a little bit. But, the, I mean, that's one out of... How many? I know. I mean, when you can mention Tapper and Will Will Johnson because they stand out because yeah. you didn't have any. Yeah. So you give – that's Beamer, Beat and Bow, putting in the work. Is that – I mean, those kids are usually going – I mean, th- like their their choices aren't usually to well, it, Alabama it, or, you know, USC. Like yeah. they, they'll go to West Virginia or I mean, Virginia Maryland Tech's or Rutgers. Off so much that I think that they've definitely been able to yeah. – and I don't even think it's just the Beamer connection as far as just that area of – the world college but Virginia football just isn't Pete, what it is. The beach area was great for Virginia Tech, obviously. Yeah. I mean, with Michael Vick and sure. I mean, Virginia Tech trying to go to go after Texas now. Hard. I don't know if that's going to work, but that's what they're trying to do. I don't think that's going to work. I mean, Missouri tried it and had some success, but that you know, Arkansas's tried it that haven't had any success. That's reason one of the reasons Nebraska's become a dead program, basically. It's kind of weird how they these couldn't schools, make it work anymore. Well, it, it's weird how these schools have tried to, in a way, like redefine their recruiting regions, and it just doesn't work like that. No. I don't think unless you're a unless you're a, a national power that is at the level where you can do that. Yeah, because you have to be a national power and you have to be at the peak of your sure. Like you have to be at the like peak. Clemson can go anywhere in the country. Like OU in 2014 probably couldn't have done that, but because of what they've been able to do now. They're in a position. You know what's weird is, I, I mean, I'm sitting there, Josh. I know you you probably just sat in front of it all day. But you're watching the combine, and you see Nebraska dude after Nebraska dude at the combine. You're like, how do they suck? Like, they had two defensive tackles running faster than Neville Gallimore. I, I, I mean, that guy put up some freaky numbers. Um, but, yeah, I, 
there there's not enough of them and they're just so pedestrian offensively mm-hmm. but you're right they should be better than they are that should have been an 8 and 5 9 and 4 kind of team last year because it's not like they're playing in a great division i mean they they it a decent nebraska team should be able to compete every year for the big 10 their their divisional title just because all the monsters are on the other side of things yeah yeah well, I didn't want to start a whole Nebraska. We've done that plenty in the past. It's just so easy. <laughs> you want to, you want to talk to no, Rex Burkhead? No, no, I knew you were going to go there. Rex. <laughs> but like I said, we've gotten away with it before on the pod because we know Nebraska people aren't listening to the pod. Uh, speaking of listening to the pod, can can Andy Staples just give us a shout out or what? <laughs> oh, about us saying that they need to raid the Pac-12? Yes. Like I was like, we literally covered this just like five days ago. I mean, it, it 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 all makes sense though. It's good for all the reasons that we talked about. I mean, the the financial struggles of the Pac-12. Oh, that is so I, I will crazy. say, I yeah. never I never went to okay, like the USC stuff. When I saw that come out and that they were kind of not committing to the Pac-12 and a you know kind of leaving the door open for someone to do a TV deal with them, like that's what I was really like. Oh, because that happened like a day or two after we talked about it on the pod. I was like, oh, so this is, USC's vulnerable. Like, you could go, like, can you imagine if you brought USC into the pack, into the uh, Big 12? Be interesting. Uh, Who would that hurt the most? Like an Oklahoma State? Or would it even really matter when it's all said I don't think it would matter. I mean, USC's going to get who who they get. I mean, no matter what conference they're in. They're just and like I think Oklahoma. it would help OSU. They could go. They could start actually go to California. Having a presence in Southern California. Yeah. Oh, that's if they yeah. wanted to have a presence on the but recruiting see, trail. <laughs> I know you uh. said, look, it would help UCLA, but it would also give you two games in California. To yep. if you're for, it would help Oklahoma State. It would help Texas Tech get some of those fringe guys, knowing they're going to at least be back in in California every year. Yep. To play a game. And, yep. I mean, you would have to start having some earlier kickoffs, probably. I don't know. I mean, you'd probably still have the 9 o'clock pack, you know, West Coast kickoffs, Pacific times. But, I mean... Yeah, but I don't think you'd have any actual 9 a.m. kickoffs on the West Coast. <laughs> like, teams no, playing... 9 p.m. Yeah. 9 oh, p.m. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got you. Oh, okay. I got you. Uh, but, no, yeah, you would probably have to have some 9 a.m. kickoffs on the West Coast. I don't think you would actually be playing games at 9 a.m., though. No. It would be 11 a.m. here and then 9 a.m. out there. Yeah, that'd be hard to do. I mean, didn't they do that this year? Had like a 10 o'clock a.m. kickoff? Uh, Maybe Cal or somebody? I think that's right. And it was just like, why? Nobody nobody gives a damn. I will say this. We've been thinking in terms of like, and I could tell Josh was fired up to talk about this the way he was tweeting about it uh, today. But I, I really only thought about bringing in two to get it back to 12, but... If you take two, you might as well take four. I mean, if one's if USC is going to fall, you're going to be able to get three more to fall. Is that the big? Yep. Is that the big one that you have to get on board, and then everybody else follows? Yep. Yeah. To me. Yep. <clears throat> even with get, even with as kind of shitty as that athletic department it is right now. Yep. Yeah, it, but they're it, still USC. The brand, sure. And they're in Los Angeles. Sure. I mean, they, they, oh, even, you had the '90s. I mean, it happens. Yep. Where's Oregon fall into that mix? I mean, there are they the next call that you make after USC? Yep. I think I, I would almost I think I could make an I argument think, that they'd be the first school that you I call. I think that you have to get USC and UCLA. I think you need those two California schools. And then you get Oregon. And then um I I I love the idea of of uh just letting Colorado become a Mountain West team. Like after they left the Big Twelve, for spite, yeah, you know, just you know. just just destroy them. Yep, oh, that I, certainly I, has not worked out to anybody's. I will benefit. say, if I'm going to take a four team, I'm taking Arizona State, just mm-hmm. because recruiting region, and it's such a great place to go. Yeah, Tempe, Tempe is just awesome. fantastic. Yeah, oh, oh I, great base. I, I, they I would they take have a nice. Six. They have a nice athletic program, Arizona State. I wouldn't say you're going to go to a 16 team conference, Josh. Yep, that's what I a would. lot. Yeah, that's what they're. I would take the two Arizona schools, the two LA schools, and I take Oregon and Washington. Yeah, you you leave zero chance for the Pac-12 to ever return. I mean, and if you owned 
the western half of the country. We have to find out if Seattle is still standing in the next six months. And I don't. I, I, I will accept no version of this idea that doesn't have Seattle in it. Seattle is a must for me, <laughs> and I will be going to every Oklahoma road game in Seattle. That will. Oh, happen. that was one of my favorite trips ever. Speaking of, I uh, love Seattle. Kansas City University has canceled their game. Oh no! At Seattle University this right. evening. I that, do. No, are they going to play? That's a new one. That was Chicago gonna, State. Chicago oh, yeah. State. Yeah. yeah. Are they playing these games in a in old folks' home? I uh, I do not know. They must be pretty they have like a disease ridden retirement though. arena that they were gonna play all these games well, in they were women's basketball games oh boy yeah you would think that out of, i will say this the 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 people like it's the when you saw that the student organization came out and said we should play games in the tournament without fans i'm like you guys are so coddled and so just naive to think that the NCAA, the NCAA, if the NCAA tournament doesn't have any fans in the stands, you should just cancel it. You shouldn't get to play it. <laughs> there is like, zero percent chance that's going to happen. Fans in the stands is the most just ridiculous utopian. I don't know what world they live in. You, it's you think- a, I don't look. I think players should be paid and all that stuff. But let's not pretend like you're getting free school for nothing. I mean. All, all of our parents paid a lot of money for us to go to school. Like that was in, paid in for my friends as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I get it. Uh, but I mean, like you, you are there because of the fans. Like, have we got to this place where the the media and the fans and social media has is become so vilified that it, there's a separation now between student athletes and everyone else that's not. In, in involved with the university? It's close. I think yeah. both sides of it have close. kind of made it like that, haven't yeah. they? Like, they've wanted that to be like that. Well, I mean, with all the internal media and all that stuff, and it's like, you know, you're your own brand. and But it's like the fans are kind of getting pushed to the side like they don't really matter. And, and I can understand why people might feel that way. Well, as long as they're spending money to that university or that school or, you know, wherever the, to go they're attend not, those though. games. I mean, that's starting to fall off. I see what you're it's saying. It's becoming a problem. Yeah. No, it is. And I think that Do that fans is... fans feel less connected to, you know, a, a university than they ever have before in the sport? Absolutely. I would say 100%. Even though they have more access with social media than ever before. Yeah. They don't they're not connected because I don't think that you know any of these right. guys. You don't get to know any of these players, mm-hmm. and I, I'm specifically talking from an Oklahoma perspective. But I would imagine, you know, we talk to the folks, down, the Orange Bloods folks that cover the team, uh, you know, whoever it be, they get the same feeling that we're getting as far as uh, I will say it's this past too. the paranoia. After doing this for 20 years, I know the coaches less than I've ever known them that are at OU. Like there is such a such a wall now between the media and the actual coaches. I used to have coaches that just called me, but just call and bullshit. That never happens anymore. Yeah. It's there's such a paranoia and a Is that coming from the top down or do you think it's more of a people just don't I, I don't want to say care for that relationship, but I think there's so much bullshit, you know, you know, in the media now that wasn't there, it used to be... This is true, too. You would go to practice, and there would be five people. Right. Sure. Yep, sure. Like, it was... When I first started, it was, like, me, James Hill, um... Who? Like, who, I like, couldn't hear you. I, I, you know, I'm not saying it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll I, use the code stop word. It, stop code it! Word. No, code don't, word. don't code do word. it! Code word. Don't do it. Me, another guy... My favorite... Who's barely in the media. I was just gonna anymore. say, my favorite kind of candy is Whoppers. Okay. That's it. That's all I was going to say. Um, I'm, uh, and it'd be like one guy from the Oklahoma, one guy from the Tulsa world. And da- like the Dallas Morning News had an OU beat person. Mike Jones. Well, it was someone else before, before Mike Jones. Before Mike Jones. <laughs> yeah. Love uh, Mike Jones. But like it would be the same people every day. And, you know, coaches were more trusting and they would tell you stuff off the record and you would keep it off the record. But now there's seven student reporters and. You know, seven and websites and seven t- seven students from the TV. The, yeah, and like, then what every the? TV station. And, we almost got Bob to cuss. And every <laughs> yeah. it's close. and like you know, you'll have. It's just so many people, and and a lot of people. 
don't need to be there or don't ever ask any questions or don't ask any good questions and they're just there to aggregate. Uh, it's just, I can see why the coaches are like, I don't really know who in here. And then you have all these people that are such pandering bullshit artists that just, you know, they might as well just be fans in the stands who make your job harder because all they do is kiss up and yeah. kiss ass. and. Well, I, I think that it's it's interesting how... It's not a professional environment anymore. For sure. I, I completely agree with that. And I, I think that it's interesting just as far as the way that, you know, we have changed the way that we cover the team over the last even five years. Mm-hmm. Hell, I'd say the last three years even. Uh, but it's it has become like more of a... Basically on Monday and Tuesdays, not to just completely go inside the, the coverage, I guess, or whatever the mm-hmm. f- you want to call it, but... It just seems like everybody races home to just get this shit out on Twitter as po- as fast as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Because then I understand that from the fans point. I would if I was waiting on Thunder News or Cubs News or whatever kind of news, I would be sitting there refreshing if I knew that I was going to hear from if I could only hear from the team that I f- love and cover and or follow two times a week at the most. And really you don't care if you're getting it from Adam Schefter or uh Shams or Woj, like you just want the news. You just want yeah. the scoop. No, I, I completely agree. And I, I think that that is kind of a battle that everybody's fighting right now, uh, you know, in the media. And I don't think it's exclusive, again, just to Oklahoma. No, I think that's exclusive. No. That it, is everybody. It's not the problem. Whether it be the New York Yankees or the f-ing Southern Nazarene, whoever. The the problem Nobody for... Nobody wants Southern Nazarene <laughs> breaking news. Problem yeah, for, for, for me, it's just Bethany the guy. media thing, is that if you ask the question that gets the right response, but someone else gets it out first because right. they didn't have to do anything. Well, there's so many times when I've been asking a question, and it m- might have been something uh, that I was holding back, and it was going to be news, you know, whether it was an injury or, or transfer. Like... Here, the, the worst part is I'm the one asking the question that I'm being talked to, so I can't just all can't, of a sudden ignore yeah, the person start and tweeting. start tweeting <laughs> where everybody else can tweet while I'm I'm having to give my full attention to the coach. Because no, you don't need he, to pay attention yeah. to the answer. You already got what you need. Just start yeah. tweeting it out. How did we get here? That's just my media. I, we were talking about just coaches and relationships and how different they are now. Which I don't know what we were talking about before that. <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> um, that was basically just a little a, bit of a vent session. Do us. a sponsor hit. Get us back on track. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's reset here. I uh, want to remind you guys, MidFirst uh, Mid First Bank, uh, our title sponsor for the Unofficial 40 podcast. You guys can go to midfirst.com slash u40. That's midfirst.com slash u40. Right there. They are the exclusive provider of the OU credit card. You can apply uh, right online. You can get uh, 0% APR for the first year uh, of, that you have the card. And great uh, a rewards program. Uh, you have a chance to uh, do all kinds of uh, game day experiences when uh, that is going during the season. Uh, certain times you got uh, different cash back rewards, gift cards, merchandise, travel, uh, all kinds of stuff. So uh, go to midfirst.com slash u40 apply for the ou credit card it's got the big uh, ou logo on it and uh that way everybody knows you're a sooner fan every time you uh whip that bad boy out so thanks to midfirst bank and uh, midfirst.com for being a great title sponsor of the unofficial 40 podcast and please go support them as they uh, support us uh, do a great job of that on the podcast all right uh so spring practice is getting ready to start this week uh, we're gonna have a, no, we are gonna have a lot of media stuff this week. Four days, Monday through Thursday, and that will include pro day uh, coming up on Wednesday. So uh, they'll hit the practice fields on Monday, and uh, basically uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday they'll practice, and then they go on spring break. Uh, but let's start with pro day real quick because Jalen Hurts kind of indicated that uh, to uh, I think someone from the athletic was it. I think, I think that's right. That uh, I think they should cancel spring break. By the way, coronavirus fears. Yes, absolutely. Ooh. Um, I'm not on board with that. I'm sorry. I, it's been so long since I've been on spring break. I I can't even imagine what spring break is like now. I would imagine if it was the same thing that it used to be, only ten times bigger, ten times better. 
ten times sexier. I could see uh, spring break being the place where Edward lost his virginity for the first time. My mother listens to this. I'm not going to confirm <laughs> or deny. Uh, you're, so you are confirming that you're not a virgin, though, apparently. There we go. Okay. Good. I'm happy for you. Congrats on the sex. Thank you. Um, so, Jalen Hurts seems to indicate that he will work out at OU's Pro Day by saying he thinks he can run a 4-4. Which I don't think there's any way he can run a four four. From a four five nine to a four four. Yeah, that's a big stretch. And I mean, held. It, it generous held. timer. Yeah. Generous. Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, it'll be interesting to see if he does that. I, I'm guessing that he won't. That he'll live on the four five nine. That he knows that's about what he runs, and that might have been some big talk. Well, I think he'll just throw because that's all he really needs. He was so impressive at the combine, and we said that we we said he'll be impressive. What his biggest issue is is reading defenses, you know, uh, uh, diagnosing coverages, things like that, and getting the ball out of his hand, which is really hard to, you know, put someone in that position exactly in in the combine or even in a personal workout. So all he has to do is come up with a script, throw to his receivers, throw to Ceedee Lamb as much as possible, <laughs> uh, look good doing it, and he could be a second round pick, guys. That's crazy to think about, but yeah. That's that's what the groundswell saying. I'm not going to lie. Short of it being the Baltimore Ravens, which you can totally, totally make sense yes. of. Uh-huh. With that and maybe a couple other notable exceptions, I would question the front office of anybody that's been a second-round pick on Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I, I just don't know how you can... Again, and we kind of talked about it before the... Uh, He's before the, fourth round before the NFL Combine to me. I don't think anybody didn't think he wasn't going to test well. I don't think anybody right. didn't think he wasn't going to throw well. Right. It's when you put him in a game and there's guys just running wide open, and I'm sure teams are going to be able to see that when they look at the tape or when they talk to people that watched him play. Like, I can't tell you how many times you saw wide receivers just I, frustrated would probably oh, be the yeah. right word. Mm-hmm. Because they, CD Lamb in they, particular, Charleston yes, Rambo, Charleston Rambo, like there's no doubt in my mind that Charleston Rambo did not like Jalen Hurts, and that, obviously I don't Just know that for a fact. And, and, and stuff that we talked to him about after games, during practice, uh, or after practice, yeah, post post practice. I mean, it just it was very apparent that they were not being, I don't want to say treated right, but maybe not a belief that they could get the ball. And I just don't know how a team would all of a sudden think, well, these defenses are faster than what he saw in college, so he's going to process it more quickly now. Yeah. It just, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, Baker's as good as you'll find at, you know, finding open guys and seeing things. And you, you watch Brown's game, which we've had plenty of opportunities to do because they've shown him just about every week, but you can see how tight those windows become for, for him. Sure. And he makes some throws where you're just like, holy shit, that was a great throw. But at the same time, he also, you know, is closer to throwing picks than he was in college on, on quite a few occasions. So, yeah, you're right. How's Jalen Hurts going to go from college to pro when he already had trouble diagnosing and, and, and getting through his progressions? Obviously, Kenneth Murray isn't going to run. But do you think he'll work out? Has there been oh, any talk? Oh, I think talk? he has to. I mean, the hamstring is not that big of a deal at all. I don't think it is. No, I, I, I mean, and you're talking Wednesday, though. I mean, what was it, a week ago now? Yeah, exactly. That he tweaked it. I could see him, you know, sitting out and doing a personal workout for teams or something like that. If it's If he just doesn't feel 100%. But, man, I, I mean, I, I really think. If he's healthy, that's the the best opportunity for him is to do it Wednesday and get it over with, because he's already he apparently shined in the interview process. But you knew he would. Yeah. But you know they can ask some stuff and trip you up. And Kenneth isn't always, you know, he's kind of a robot when it comes to that. But um, I think I'm ready to make a hot take. Go ahead. And I'm glad that Josh is. Thousands of miles away, hundreds of miles away from me <laughs> before I say this. I think the combine is one of the most unentertaining, uninformational events that we watch every year and act like it's a big deal. <laughs> oh, God. 
hot take. <laughs> no, I, Eddie, I know, like, you're expecting me to, like, blow up about that. Like, I know where you're coming from. I get it. Do I enjoy watching those guys perform? Yeah, obviously. I love sure. it. Let me ask you this. What, what position but, group do you enjoy the most? Probably it's gotta be either re- offensive line or li- or the uh, defensive backs. Really? Receivers in the gauntlet don't do anything for you? Not really. I mean, I know that sounds stupid. I, I don't even know if I'm supposed to say that, but it just, I don't know. Because I, I watch these guys and then everybody leaves the combine and Kenneth Murray or Neville Gallimore are perfect examples. It's like, well, he runs this and all of a sudden... Maybe he should go in the first round. It's like, I don't know. Maybe, and maybe I'm just like, I've been soured by the whole process by but Orlando Daniel Jeremiah Brown. had first round grades on both those guys. Sure. Mm-hmm. But I just, I, I hate the hot take reaction of, like you hear Peter Schrager, and I, I'm not picking on him, but he's like, well, he, I, talk, I spoke to one AFC exec that said, after talking to Kenneth Murray, he's for sure going to take this guy. <laughs> it's like, that's so stupid for somebody to say. Like you, you had to sit down and talk to the guy to to make you think this guy could help my football team. Is that just insane? I think it, you're. I'm sorry, Josh. Uh, go ahead. It, I mean, it is Eddie. Like, and, and if that's an actual thing that's happening, I take everything they tell the media as. I, I'm with Bob. It's all smokescreen. It's yeah. all them trying to present an image to help the position in which they actually feel. Like Maybe that. I don't like the presentation of it and like the just the media onslaught is, that the combine has become. Maybe that's what I'm not angry, but maybe that's what I'm looking at more so than the actual combine itself. It's difficult. I will say this. It is not easily digestible as an entertaining format. Like, most people have no idea. Like, you like the offensive... I'm sure, Josh, offensive line drill is probably your favorite part of it. Oh, yeah, without question. Like, you know what you're looking at. You know, you know, what steps you're looking at. You know, what... You know, when something impresses you about the movement of an offensive lineman, you can tell what that is. A lot of people don't know the difference between, you know, this guy being explosive or that guy being explosive. Yeah. No, that's... And... The thing that I think people always get, because I hear this crap about, you know, oh, rivals and camps, and they, they kind of make that parallel comparison. And it's it's fair to a point, but it's just like the combine, and then it's just a piece. Like, it's more information. I'm going to yeah. take this. Okay, this guy that I thought was really fast went to the combine and ran four six two. Okay, well, that's pretty good for his size, but it's not the exemplary runner that I thought he was. I'm going to go back and watch that and kind of see. I mean, I think... And, and there, it's a reason that, they're, that they've are that been the two main guys, but Mike Mayock and Daniel Jeremiah do a really good job of explaining the magnitude of some of these things. Like when you're looking at an offensive lineman, he could stop running at 15 yards and no scout in that audience would give a crap as long as they got that 10-yard split. They're trying to figure out how a guy is going to fire off, how he's going to explode, and do the things he needs to do within his job. Because if it's gone 40 yards – then he did his job correctly anyways. If he's running 40 yards, something went really well for the offense. So that that's not really that important. But there's other things like, you know, that is going to matter to defensive back. Does he have the makeup speed to go run with a guy? It's hard to tell for, let's say, Parnell Motley as a good example because how many elite receivers did Parnell Motley face this year? I mean – Duvernay, maybe Denzel Mims, yeah, he didn't probably shut down Mims though. It's kind of hard to. Yeah, no, no, I, and I, I'm not saying that's a diss on Parnell Motley. I'm saying it can be hard to gauge when you're not seeing him go against guys that you know. Okay, this guy's a known quantity. You know, they, uh, now they a scout the the local scout might have gone to practice to watch him go against CD Lamb and came away thinking, man, this guy's really good. Like I, I love what I'm seeing him do in practice against maybe the best receiver in the whole draft. So. There are, there are measures to all of it, but it gives you a status quo. Like this kid on the same field on the same day from Hofstra ran this time compared to this guy from Alabama, and I can quantify that. So I, I think that's where it's big and it's useful, but there's no question. I mean, you look through the years, guys like Mike Mamula, he's the one I always go back to that like tested out of the room and 
just was nobody, was nothing. His tape didn't show anything, but he was a workout warrior, and so everybody lost their mind. And that happens every couple of years. Who was the receiver a few years ago that ran like the uh, the kid from Maryland that ran the crazy time the Raiders drafted him like eighth overall, and he was just not – I mean, he was a fringy first-round pick. Hayward Bay. Bay. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly who it was. So, I mean, like, there's always stuff like that. I, I think the only way that it becomes mainstream – is if you put people in full pads and you have offensive line go against defensive line and wide receivers go against defensive backs, and that's never going to happen. because people Too much will, risk. Pe- yes, oh, too yeah. much <laughs> risk, and people just won't participate. The big names, the first-rounders, they won't want to deal with that. I mean, you, I mean, they sit out now and they do nothing. I mean, yeah. I mean Kyler Murray sat out. He still went number one. Joe Burrow sat out. He's still going to go number one. And there's some guys that could do Chase that Young every year. Sat out. It's not. It's yep. not going to hurt him at all. It's just. We're just going to see more and more people sit out. It makes sense. I don't think. I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah. No. It makes I just, sense. I just don't think there's a way to fix it to make it as mainstream as the NFL wants it to be. I guess I just don't need to know what insert offensive lineman. And I will tell you this: the vertical. <laughs> it you know was, what I mean? Yeah. It was. Yeah. It's a. It's, it's also. It's a day event. Yeah. I mean, trying to put this thing at night it didn't work. It's like trying, prime time. It's 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 kind of. That's what I kind of liked a, about the combine was the fact that I could wake up on a Saturday morning yeah. and just flip it on, yeah. lay in bed and watch it. That's kind of like because it's it's it's, Carrie, it's there's a lot of oh, lulls. I mean, it yeah. it reminds me of watching golf. Really, <laughs> I mean, it's it's kind of tranquil. Yeah. I mean, you, uh, it, it's a good. You could fall, you know, take a nap on the couch while I you're would, watching it, and then I would watch LPGA and, like major golf, uh, maybe ninety times out of a hundred more than I would watch the NFL the combine. combine. Okay, that's madness. So now yeah. you've gone just too damn far. Well, is Michelle um, Lee in the tournament? She's pregnant right now. Johnny uh, West's maybe, baby. M- m- hey, maybe you know, her father in law is Jerry West. Not, we're not here yeah, to judge yeah, people's. That, yeah. You know, she married their, a white their man. own little things. Oh, no, I could have been it. Could have been me. I know. As soon as I saw that, I was like, "She was up for a white guy." Damn. Damn it. I just kept myself in shape. I, I think you guys were two and three. I, mean, I don't know though. They so live close. in California. They're close to the, the coronavirus. Maybe. Maybe Johnny can. Get wow. It. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jerry would never let that happen. I'm sorry, Josh. I'm not going to say I what everybody thinks. Totally I'm gonna interrupted say. you. <laughs> uh. I'm trying to remember what I was. What, Why what the I was combine say. should be during the oh, day? Oh, we're talking about the day, and it was kind of oh, like a golf yeah. tournament. Oh, yeah, it's 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 just it's for the hardcore fans, Kerry. You've talked for years about like when I talk recruiting, I've got to give more background, like because it's not something every fan that watches OU at 11 a.m. on a Saturday morning they don't know where the the number three defensive end on OU's board is from. They don't know where you know, Olive Branch, Mississippi is. Like, they don't know all these things, so you kind of have to start from square one and build your way forward. Really? Now, I just the, want you to say what position a guy plays most of the time. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. No, it's fair. It's fair. Like, I, I, I'm I, so deep in it, it's hard for me to see the other side of the fence. Like, I, I get it completely. But that's the same deal with this. Like, it's not... Everybody's like, okay, that's a good NFL player. I, I can see that. I can watch that on Sundays. I know that player is good because he's beating up on the guy across from him. Watching a bunch of guys do things against air, it's really hard for most people to quantify that. And so to make that a primetime deal where everybody can watch it and try to digest it is really difficult. Yeah. But the guy who's going to stay at home on a Tuesday, that's the guy who knows it. Like, that's the guy invested enough to either know it already or to learn it as he goes. And the other thing is, like, you also, when you get those players down there, they're not really telling you what you're watching. They're usually just talking. I don't know. I'm like, Dion can go Dion, off. Dion, Irvin. Steve Smith never Steve Smith. stays on track. Oh, Steve Smith. Is a, <laughs> he's a treasure. I love that guy. Just burning down. Who was it he just crushed? I forgot uh, you tweeted oh, John about Ross. it. You were very Ross. Sweet. You oh, were John Ross. John Ross. Oh, John yeah. Ross. Oh, God, that was amazing. I mean, and it was it was true. Like it was just one of those things that nobody ever says that crap. I think the uh, and this is my final thought on it. I think the other side of it too is is I've gone to these combines, these high school combines mm-hmm. and stuff, and I've seen guys that are really impressive, uh, performing wise. 
Well, we used and to have the U.S. Get, Army Combine. And then you, know. you get them out on a football field. There needs to be some kind of pussy detector. And to see the next like, if a guy is just going to be soft once he gets on the football field. And that can't be that that just can't be, I guess, made note of in a combine setting. It's like, it's oh, an okay, this, this guy you know. sucks. We're looking yep. the one This guy puts on the pads. He's yeah. a pussy. Anybody well, else that, besides Motley worth, worth that, watching? You mean it, on pro day? Yeah, that wasn't at the combine. Or is, Mo- know, is Brett is Brett Bowers coming back? Or <laughs> we, I fingers crossed. <laughs> okay. I mean, I need to see. We will carry uh, that so live. Guys, as per our earlier conversation, breaking all sporting events in Italy will take place without fans present for at least the next month due to the coronavirus coronavirus outbreak in the country. The Italian government announced on Wednesday. Uh, next I'm, thing I'm I'm I need lost. to hear from anybody from Italy is I want to. Spaghetti update. I don't. They have athletics over there. What soccer? Milan. Sir, sir. Danilo's from there, although he hasn't been great lately. What Liverpool in Italy? (laughs) (laughs) That's a joke. Yes, the Beatles are from Italy, Eddie. (laughs) Kristen James might play Manchester United. (laughs) Unbelievable. He's hunting for the name of my team, and he doesn't know it. So he's, <laughs> no, he's is it Chelsea? Throwing. No, it's Arsenal. Oh, Arsenal. Arsenal. Now you're going to no. piss me Chelsea. off. <laughs> now you've gone too damn far. You went to the combine, and then you went too far. Mm, I'm just coming after you. Yeah, Christian James for, plays for Fortitudo in Italy. You know, I he's forgot about doing that. doing really well. I think he he's actually is having really a really well good year. There. That's crazy. I. It's not going to be the last sporting event that is canceled. Or oh, no. uh, fans held out. I mean, this is it's going to be. They pushed the uh, James Bond premiere back to uh, November. That. That's crazy. And it was getting ready to come out. Wait, what? Was it like this weekend or <laughs> April. something? Yeah, oh, like, April. Yeah, April like next month or something. Yeah. yeah, and they pushed it all the way back to November now. That's wild. Which I like the Daniel. Oh, I think the. Uh, I, if you ask me today on March fourth, I don't think there's any chance they have the Olympics this year, in the summer. Is it in Japan? Yes. It's in Tokyo. All that. All that uh, radiation they've got. Did you see that deal on Real Sports? Mm-mm. Oh, I haven't watched Real Sports in a, in a while. Am I missing out? That was a pretty interesting. Yeah, it wasn't. It was like recent? No. Yeah. I think last month's. Anyway. Um, no, but others at the Combine, I mean, I mean, they're really, I mean, Parnell, I mean. I think hell, Motley's the guy that the list? ever. I mean. <laughs> Well, it'll be the four that were up there. Uh, granted, that Hertz actually does participate. Uh, I don't know. Tony might participate. She might try and like hold his jock or catch balls for him, not footballs. <laughs> In which case, I hope she chokes and dies, but that's no big deal. Uh, Maybe you'll get guys like Q Overton and yeah, Q Overton, Dylan Fab Fabatau. So. Guys, what what do you think? I mean, and again, it's a hand timer, so it's not the same as what we saw Neville and Kenneth and CD and Jalen run. What do you think Motley will run, and what does he need to run to be drafted? I mean, I think he'll run like I a think, four four seven ish or something like that. I think that. he's a four four six guy. <laughs> you undercut me by one. I think he's a four four. The price five is right, guy. bitch. No, one. no, 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 no. Four six. Four four five. You say oh, four, four six? six. Four six. I, I see, don't think he's that fast. I'm close I'm 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 closer with Bob. I would have said like four five eight or yeah. somewhere in well, that. I'm gonna ballpark. go one if we're doing prices right. <laughs> I I just I still remember him running stride for stride with Hollywood Brown though. He's a, he is speed competitively wasn't, faster. Speed than wasn't him. really his issue with size. I mean, he's just such a small guy. And he he's just not He's, there's no girth. Yeah, he's just not a very big guy. Yeah. He's not girth. I know it hurts yeah. you to say all that, Carrie. That's really big of you. <laughs> well, I, look, you were, you, guy? you really came around to part of I mean, you overtook them. You you took that mantle and ran I, with it. I Like I said, I, I am not wrong very often, but, man, I was wrong on him. He had a great year. And when so. you look at what Mims did at the Combine, that helps Motley. Some you you would you're think. right. You That's a good think. point. Mm-hmm. 
Let's put on that you, Baylor tape. I think say you've got to think he's just like he's going to show up to pro day with like the Baylor tape. He's going to like ask somebody <laughs> to put it on like a big screen somewhere. Do we got a projector in here? Like I just it it kind of shocks me that because he had that good week at the. Um, it's not the Senior Bowl, the Shrine. Shrine. Shrine Bowl? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He had a good week down there from everything I read, and he kind of thought, okay, he'll he'll get into the combine, but man, it just never happened. I would have lost a lot of money after he, the Shrine Bowl. It, I just, it seemed like every time that somebody has a week like he did, and you see every update is some type of positive, that guy always gets invited to the combine. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like I almost feel like there was something out there, whether it be medical or, and I think that would have come to a light though, wouldn't it? If he if he had like a I'm and I'm making I'm completely making this up but like a heart murmur or something like that is you, he had a th- tail. you get you get checked for that don't you I mean obviously they yeah, give you, you a physical physicals. but before that but I don't maybe know something if they at, do the it at the shrine bowl yeah I mean I don't know I have, I have no idea do there I don't, it's a weird deal I, mean, I feel bad that's what happened that to Gabe invited. isn't it he did really well at the shrine bowl and then got the invite to the combine. I can't remember if that's how that worked out. Or maybe he was already invited and he just did both. I, I really don't know. Do not remember. Um, okay, so outside of that, you know, we do start up practices next week uh, on Monday. Press conference press Monday. Co- press practice conference Tuesday. On Monday. Practice so yep. Tuesday, Thursday. Yep. They practice, and then they go on spring break. Uh, but obviously... <laughs> We've kind of had some discussions on the beat on whether we're going to refer to this as a quarterback <laughs> battle or not, uh, because we all know Spencer Rattler is going to end up being the quarterback unless he gets hurt or something like that. I just, uh, I, I think we've seen enough of Tanner Mordecai to know, like, even though when he looks good in practice, like when he's been put in the games, I know it's blowout situations, but, and by the way. It's the, such a shitty thing to say, but he is a perfect backup Yeah, for what they're about to take on isn't he he has experience I just haven't seen any flashes from him in a game I just haven't I mean he throws has, the ball fine I wouldn't he, say he's necessarily ever been in a spot though that he's had to flash has he I mean it's a bunch of mop-up work but shouldn't he want to flash every time he's out there then well he can't call I mean I mean it's not like he's well, going I mean, out what, there with shitty receivers though yeah what but at the he, same time he's he going that Rattler didn't get and Rattler flashed yeah that's I mean, a that, that that's throw a, to Bridges was a an in, just an unbelievable. Don't you throw. think? Don't you think though that that has more to do with Rattler having an incredibly better arm than somebody like him? Like that is something instant that like just Mordecai's it pops off arm. the uh, yeah absolutely. But Rattler, Rattler has an elite just special. Arm. Yeah, yeah Rattler. Like special. when the ball comes, it's the, it's kind of the cliche thing that everybody says when you see Rattler or somebody like him throw the ball. It's the ball comes out differently, right? Yep. Yep. That's not necessarily a, a hit on Mordecai. Mm-hmm. Oh. I don't know. That whole... Like, you see Mordecai a lot in Biddy Wiley's Insta videos. But, like, Lincoln Riley trying to explain away, you know, oh. playing Rattler before him in the Peach Bowl in, you know, trash time. All time. Great moment. So weird. Like, I'm, I'm genuinely... I Even would imagine, to this day, it's still a little weird. I would imagine that Mordecai goes through spring and, you know, either has a feel or asks Lincoln Riley after it's over, you know, what are my chances? And he gets told probably, you know, it looks... Oh, I think if he was going to leave, he already would have left. Yeah, I think he's going to graduate. He's got to graduate and then have two... Uh, two right. years if he right. does it right. Yeah, but I mean, there, it would have made no sense to leave already because he gets his, he'll get his degree now, go through spring ball, and then he'll be able to do whatever. But he does. also wasn't a mid-year guy, so I don't know where he stands with his yeah. academics. I'm too. convinced more than ever that if you <clears throat> just put in the work and you go to class and you take intercession or summer school and yeah. all that kind of you stuff, get it, in two and a half years. it doesn't matter how long you're around. You can get, you can graduate very quickly from college these and days with online stuff. Sure. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that, you know, was it Kersey that talked to maybe Mordecai's dad, I want to say. And I mean, I think he's basically signed up for another year. He's going to stick it out. Mm-hmm. He's going to be the backup for Spencer Rattler. And we'll have to see if, Rat, if uh, Rattler's durable or is he someone that's going to get hurt. Yeah, he's not a hmm. not a real big Rattler's guy. A pussy a little bit. <laughs> no, maybe soft. Can't take a hit. You, you sort of maybe knew that's that why he didn't play a senior in high school. 
Let's start that one. You knew Jalen Hurts was going to withstand the punishment, but did I, he though? I, I kind of wondered about Kyler, if he was going to be able to do it. He did, and we'll see if Rattler can. Well, the other thing is going to be, you know, finding out Trey Norwood. What's what's how much is he going to do? Absolutely. Um, is is will he be able to? I I don't. I'm guessing he won't be full go in the spring, but I would imagine he gets to do a lot of stuff, just physically moving around, being out there, learning. Or maybe he's dressed out, but he doesn't go in live situations. I would almost figure that he does go full. I mean, he was moving around. At, at least a practices. little bit during bowl practices mm-hmm. and stuff. So, well, I've seen him in some of the the off season videos. He's doing what everybody else is doing. Yeah, I would think that. And then I, th- I mean, it's going to be. I feel like we say this every year, but this spring is kind of interesting. Just replacing for a lot Kenny of Mur- Kenneth Murray. I mean, absolutely. Caleb Kelly's role, along with Sean White's role, and Brian Mead's role. Scholarship. A lot of, a lot of people in the back. <laughs> what about? Uh, yeah. Now, who are the uh, mid-semester guys to watch? I'm mean, I'm just trying to think. I think Josh's boy Witter has got to be one to watch just because of the lack of depth at at that yeah. position. And same with Bryson Washington mm-hmm. at safety. Guys, I keep hearing the Aguabo Aguabo stuff at Mike is is happening. I mean, I, he's getting a real he's going to get a real look there and see what they, what he can kind of do there. I. I that doesn't make any sense to me. Like I don't feel like he moves like that kind of guy. Like not that he. I mean, he's a great athlete, but I think of those guys with like little quick choppy steps, and he's a big long strider. I don't know, Josh. Though I mean, when you talk to the players, like I remember mm-hmm. talking to some of the players, and I, you know, basically every one of them said that he is a total freak. Like when he first got there, yeah. that he blew all the veterans away with his athleticism. So. Maybe there's something that we haven't really. Maybe because of what he's been asked to do, maybe we haven't seen that part of him yet. No, I mean, like, I mean, you know, you guys know I was pretty big on you know him coming in. I thought he really had a chance, and he exceeded even my expectations. But I, it just, and again, a part of it is me learning what Oklahoma is looking for at these positions and what they kind of what each position is going to entail. But I, you know, like. Murray was a quick little footed and going to change direction real fast and kind of move. And that's not how I see a Guaybu. I don't see him as like real twitchy, but he's plenty fast and he's big and he's long and he's powerful. So I, I, you know, like I said, we'll see. I I'm interested to see it. It just has kind of surprised me that it isn't one of those things that it sounds like Oklahoma, you know, just kind of kicked the tires on and in that serious yeah. about it. it sounds like it's going to really get a long look. That's going to be interesting. And maybe know. that says something about Wete, that he's going to be able to be there with Benito and, and kind of wait and see with John, John Michael Terry how far along he is. Yeah, and maybe they, that's because they feel good about John Michael Terry being a guy that, you know, can anchor that position a little bit. Um, offensively, though, I mean, obviously, seeing the young receivers blossom, you know, who's going to really step up? I mean, Jaden Hazelwood is most likely, in my mind, to be the guy that takes that next step next year. Now, Theo Weese is obviously talented. Find out on Trajan Bridges, you know, Will we? his availability. Or do you think we'll hear the, the appeal we'll process? We'll eventually, <laughs> by the time he graduates, find <laughs> out if he's ever going to play again in Oklahoma. 2022, we have a status update on Trajan Bridges. The appeals process is still ongoing. <laughs> uh, Coach, he's been in the NFL for three seasons. <laughs> Yeah, I could definitely see that. Um, Cure for the coronavirus or updates on suspended players? What comes first? Cure for the coronavirus, <laughs> without a doubt. Wow. It's a ringing endorsement for transparency. I mean, that's got to be like, you know, guys like Ronnie Perkins going through this spring. I mean, that's gotta, it's got to be kind of it's got to be kind of rough. I wonder if we're closed off to those those three. Oh, there's no way that they're letting Throughout us talk to those yeah. three. To which three? Stevenson, Bridges, Perkins. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> yeah, the, the, they'll burn you at the stake if you get within 100 yards. They probably got, like, some kind of wire fencing. They're going to put, like, little collars on you guys. You can't get within. they going to give you a little shock when you get too close. <laughs> Is maybe the most, I guess, untalked about, under-the-radar position left tackle? I was gonna, I was going to bring up Wilkins. I mean, yeah. I mean everybody's kind of, and, and myself included, I've kind of just shoot him in there. 
or wrote him in there, but to say that I would be just completely sold on that idea? If Swenson's still the guy. Ugh. I mean, look, Bill Piedenboe has recruited as well as anyone in the country on the offensive line, yet he doesn't have a standout left tackle. I mean, it's it's kind of bizarre. Completely unrelated to left tackle, but I would say that this spring, and then more so maybe even the fall, it's a put up or shut up year for Bray Walker. Like I, I think I've been holding on to hope that he turns into the guy that we thought he was when we saw him at at even all the way back to Southmore. But if he doesn't put it together this year, I have a hard time thinking that the light's just gonna turn on at some point. Well, that's part of the thing. When your twenty eighteen tackle, Simpson and Walker get moved to guards. You not only you lose the tackle depth, but if those guys aren't better than Tyrese Robinson, Marquise Hayes, what the heck's going to happen to him? Yeah, he's not he's not supplanting Marquise Hayes for no. sure. It's just not happening. But he's not a tackle, so. And Bill's been very clear on that because he's been asked that probably more than any <laughs> oh, question. Yeah. That should be the first question is. Bill gets asked this year, <laughs> this spring. You gonna move Brady tackle? I bet he'd choke out the person if they did that, <laughs> depending on who it is. He probably wouldn't we do it to, in case somebody had to, priors. We but. need to inception somebody to get him to ask that question. This is what I'm going to ask if I don't get beaten to the punch. Uh, yeah, but other than that, I mean, I, I'm really curious to see you know Theo Weiss's pro, you know progression because I think he's going to be really good. I mean, really, really good. He showed against Baylor, and he just was patient enough and accepted it somehow. I it, After a game like that, I don't know how you just say, okay, now I'm back to being me high. A.D. Miller again. It is admirable how he he's taken that. Like, he's he was the unquestioned, like, five-star, you know, guy competed his ass off at the five-star challenge, and yet, like, he's handled not being a star – not being right out there in the mix of it really well. I'm not saying I goaded him at the Peach Bowl, but I gave him a couple chances to really kind of change his tune, and he just never did, saying playing behind Lamb, playing behind the best receiver in the nation was more than enough for his fresh his freshman season. Smart Bob, kid. Bob trying to make that fake news. <laughs> Smart kid. So anyway, uh, Josh, anything else you want to hit on recruiting wise before we get out of here? I mean, uh, obviously we'll have plenty I, of time to talk about the spring game weekend and, and the build up for that. Sure, sure. I, I'm going to tease that a recruit we have talked about at some length on this podcast has some interesting visit news uh, that I have put up on the board. So we're just going to tease that out. I literally just got it on the board. So you cheapskates out there need to pay up. Um, <laughs> Whoa, but, we dropped uh, an F-bomb about the coronavirus. <laughs> But uh, but now I, I what I will talk about though is um, the vibe I got from several people that were at the LA Rivals camp this weekend that you know and did not die from the coronavirus so exciting all the way around is that Relique Brown and uh, Jalen Davies Relique Brown uh, you know for Carey running back uh, <laughs> formerly from Northern California has moved down to modern day and hey, it's just an absolutely back. explosive yeah. weapon um, breastfeeding. And, the the talk is oh, that he, <laughs> I did not see Malik Brown breastfeeding. Breastfeeding class, yeah. Just just so you know, it was the week they had a camp and they had Brock Vandegriff and Malik Brown there at the same time, and also the other younger quarterback. I can't remember his name. Ty Simpson. Uh, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. But Bob could not go because he had to go to a breastfeeding class with his wife before they had yep. a baby. It's kind of kinky. I, I, you know, I like that. I think that's probably that the first said time Bob's ever interrupted me. <laughs> he said and it was worthless. I'm sorry, Josh. He told me in confidence <laughs> it had it was, nothing to do with the baby. <laughs> I heard it had nothing to do with the baby. But anyway, Bob was I have seen. Moves. I was just trying to point out. I have seen Relique Brown in person, and I don't think you have, Josh. Josh, I have nope. I have one question about Brown. Is he a running back, or is he going to be a, like a slot type of dude? I, I think that I think that's a really good question, Bob. And I think it's one of those things where Oklahoma will tell him whatever he wants and he will get a legit... I mean, I don't mean to say that they'll do something else. I mean, they'll give him a legit chance wherever he wants it. He is an explosive guy that has that four... I mean, he's one of those few guys I've seen in high school that I'm like, he might actually run 4-3. Like, I made fun of a lot of the guys that... 
you know, I had a tweet the night the receivers were like nine receivers, the combine that actually ran sub four, four. And I was like, yeah, but I got 30 guys every camp telling me they're four, three. Um, he's one of those guys though. He's that kind of scary fast. And he's a damn sophomore in high school. He, he's just really, really good. But I, I'm with you, Bob. I could easily see him being a better fit at the slot. And letting him kind of, you know, being able to work in space a little bit more, not having to take the beating at running back, you know, just. But I, I really think that's why a guy like that would be attracted to Oklahoma because Lincoln Riley is going to create half a million ways to get the ball in his hands. I so, would imagine that conversation, that recruitment, goes something like this: Look, I'm, I'm fucking Lincoln Riley. You're gonna, you're yeah. gonna score a lot. You're gonna get the ball a lot. Doesn't matter where you play. Just come play for me. Yeah, you can pretend you're Marquise Brown. You can pretend you're Joe Mixon. You do whatever you want to do. You'll score a lot of touchdowns. Um, but the the other guy uh, that you know, I don't think OU fans are as familiar with, but as I learn more, I think they need to be, is Jalen Davies, uh, another Rivals 100 kind of corner, uh, another product of modern day. He's a senior. You know, For those that didn't follow that, Relique Brown is going to be a junior. Davies will be a senior next year, so he's part of that 2021 class. And it sounds very much like Oklahoma will get an official from him. I think they are one of the two or three more real contenders in his recruitment. So, you know, if if you could land McCutcheon and then you get Davies or Ja'Kalen Johnson, you get either one of those guys, that's the best corner class OU signed in, oh, I mean, I, I would really have to think. But you're going back into the, you know, Andre Woolfolk kind of era, like way, way back in the machine. So there is... Oh, like I said, Roy Manning, I thought, did a great job on the field in year one and really did a nice job identifying some talent uh, in recruiting. But in year two in recruiting, it looks like they are really starting to make some national impact. Bob and I were talking about this this morning just as far as you look at Oklahoma's 2021 class. They only have three commits right now. And is there pressure over the next, let's say, three weeks, month? Well, we'll go through April 18th, so right, we'll go through exactly. the spring game. How much pressure is there to just get some some numbers together? Because all of a sudden, I, I feel like we go through this kind of every year, but you go through the spring, and then you get to the summer, and that flies by, and then all of a sudden, August is here, and signing day's in three months. I don't think there's any question. There, there is some pressure, but if you look at it, going at this same point last year of the guys who signed, Oklahoma had three commitments: wow. Michael Henderson, Never would Trayvon have thought West, that. and De- Devon Gra- uh, Devon Graham. But this isn't a 2020 class that people brag about. No, no, and you're right. But if you look <laughs> through the years, like I, I'll just I'm I'm kind of winging this part a little bit. But 2019, same deal, and that was one of OU's all-time classes: Corey Roberson, Trajan Bridges, Spencer Rattler, and Austin Stogner. So you got four big pieces there. But then you have the spring game and that kind of whole area around it. Jamal Morris, Theo Weiss, Derek Green, Jonathan Perkins, EJ and Doma Ogart. Those guys all mm-hmm. committed to Oklahoma within two weeks in the month of April. Yep. So you went from four commitments to nine. And that's kind of where I would say if you told me to put a number on it on, let's say, May 1st, I bet you Oklahoma's at nine or ten. I, I think you're going to see a big run over the next eight or nine weeks. All right. Uh, last thing, I would like to apologize uh, to all of you who Eddie goaded into going to Lloyd Noble last night. I don't know why you should apologize. It was a heck of a game. And we got a t-shirt because of it. It didn't work out. Yeah. It didn't work out for OU fans, but I looked up earlier. I looked it up earlier. I went through the entire schedule. Christian Doolittle had missed one, both free throws. Okay. One time this year. It was in the first half against Stanford. Wow. Hmm. Pretty. He was 8 of 12. He was you almost, eight, you, you you almost have to go, you almost have to go historically. Like, a lot that of was looking. That was a. Stats for. You, you had to go through play by plays to get that, wouldn't you? Yeah, no, just, you could see when he didn't miss two free throws. Yeah, you could cross, there cross was a, those off. There was a lot of three for threes, yeah. four for fives, five well, for six. You don't, you don't have to care so about that. You just had to make sure that when, you, when he missed two, you looked up and you had to make sure and see when they were. So. I don't know. It is it is the start of probably my, one of my favorite times of the year with the conference tournament starting this year this week uh into next week and then uh college baseball and major oh, league baseball. Dana Acker, come on man. Yeah, just no hit LSU, no big That's deal. Impressive. <laughs> First time in 1989. Good. 
that uh that Oklahoma had a no hitter first time in school history would that you LSU say had been no hit baseball, which is an unbelievable stat. That is that's unbelievable. <clears throat> Would you say baseball, even though they were thought highly of coming into the season, they are surpassing expectations? Or are they right at the expectation line? I think they're probably right at the expectation line. I, you look at what they're getting from the other guys, and, you know, Cavalli still hasn't pitched just extremely well. He only went five innings against Arkansas. Wyatt Olds has been really good. He picked up his fourth win on That's Tuesday so night ironic. against Dallas Baptist. The Olds. Yeah. <laughs> I know it is. I'm a, I need to have a little conversation with him. Uh, they they have Arkansas Pine Bluff tonight, and then San Diego State coming into town for a three game series uh, over the weekend. So it, it's going to be interesting because you know the Big Twelve is obviously going to be really good again. You have uh, TCU, Texas Tech, obviously. We'll see what Texas is doing. They started undefeated, lost two or three last weekend, got beat on uh, Tuesday night as well, but. TCU is going to be a little bit of a more of a comeback team this year than they were last year. They weren't the, you know, the team that Jim Schlossnagel usually throws out there. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the the big thing for Oklahoma is obviously racking up top 25 wins, building a resume to not just host, but maybe push for a super regional. And if you could do that and all of a sudden you have that pitching staff, that rotation to throw in a regional or to throw in a super series then you're really in business because I think that they they could be really, really good on the mound. I, they, they still have some some things to work out on the back end, I think. And not I'm not talking about rough corn as much as, you know, getting Zach Matthews keyed in. It, is Wyatt Olds going to be a guy that comes in? And how much is he going to be a reliever as opposed to a midweek starter? You still have Ben Abram. So it's going to yeah, be kind of interesting. Everybody but, that I watched, you know, in that tournament, mm -hmm. it was like when they'd come in in relief – it's like guys just have to learn. You're going to be up a lot. You just need to throw some strikes. Yeah, yeah. Like just people. I don't know if they're trying to be too cute. Well, you look back what, at that. But, uh, I mean, just not throwing strikes really cost them against yeah. Missouri. Yeah, the Missouri game. You walk two guys, and all of a sudden a double, and you're in you're in a ball game. So uh, it's gonna it's gonna kind of be fun. And the crazy thing with this team is is they are so much so much more athletic than they have been in past years. They sold 29 bases last year. I think they have 23 so far through 13 Ooh. games right now. Good lord, that's Man, humble. that's wow. a great that's stat. A, yeah, that's a stat right there. I mean, just absolutely night and day difference. And surprise, surprise, that's what happens when you recruit really well, and that's yeah. what Skip Johnson's doing right now. They got another top ten class coming in next year. It seems like Peyton Graham's going to be a three year starter at third base and yeah, a really he's good made player. Some really good play so far. Yeah, and I, I, he's more. I think he's more of an offensive guy than a defensive guy. That, that bare hand play that he that made was awesome. Uh, against Arkansas was unbelievable. Yeah, so it will be interesting. But I think so far so good for the uh, the OU baseball team. It seems like they are definitely headed in the right direction. And uh, you know, there's <laughs> even even without the Big Twelve slate, their non conference schedule is it's unbelievable. So should be pretty fun. And Bob, before we go, your women's gymnastics report. Uh, Maggie Nichols is back. Okay, I'm just just stop it. Stop. It. I did it. <laughs> She's back. Crushed right. it. Well, Garrett Reband earned don't call him best Big 12 for nothing. golfer of the month, by the way. I know that a lot of people were worried about that. They actually didn't play that well out in uh, Vegas here the last couple of days. Well, Acker was a national player of the week, wasn't he? This yeah, week? baseball. Yeah, for sure. He won God, basically he every <laughs> every national pitcher of the week award that is out there, he won. <laughs> Deservedly so. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we covered the gamut. We uh, appreciate uh, Josh McQuistion. Uh, Just ran out of time for Sherry Cole and the girls. We'll get back to that <laughs> next week. Uh, Josh says coronavirus still ain't shit. Uh, thanks to Eddie. Thanks to Bob. I am Kerry Murdoch. And by the way, MidFirst.com, your uh, title sponsor, MidFirst.com slash U40. Go apply for that OU rewards card. Also, use that rewards card and sign up for Soonerscoop.com while you're at it. Uh, we appreciate your subscriptions. And uh, please go subscribe if you uh, enjoy the podcast and you haven't, like Josh said, stop being a freeloader and uh, get some of that inside recruiting information while you're at it. So thanks for listening. We'll see you guys back here next week on another edition of the Unofficial 40 Podcast from Soonerscoop.com.